Welcome back to my Fabe Style Journalism YouTube channel and to introduce myself, this is me, Fabe Style. In this video, I am going to be starting my new series of political vlogs where I explain politics in a way that is simple for everyone to understand. So at the start of this, we are going to start off with the Northern Ireland Assembly election and in this episode one we are going to be concentrating on what is the DUP. the biggest unionist party in Northern Ireland at the minute, currently holding the first minister post, or at least when the assembly is actually sitting. They helped ho hold up the British government between 2016 to 2019, back when Theresa May was prime minister and kept the same role when Boris Johnson became PM. But that all changed right after the December 2019 general election. But what are the central points you need to know about the DUP before voting in this assembly election? And what values will you be voting for? In this summary, I am going to outline all of the key details you need to know so you can make the right decision, whatever that may be, on May the 5th. The Democratic Unionist Party was founded by the late Ian Paisley in 1971, an evangelical Christian who Prior to going into politics, was a minister. For this reason, a percentage of the party's MOAs, MPs and electorate are evangelical Christians, which has been a problem in politics within recent years, although there are also people who would count themselves as moderates who have been both in and supporting the party. They are also, as the party's own name suggests, pro-union. Now looking at Brexit, when the 2016 referendum on whether or not the UK would leave the EU was held, the DUP were the only party to support it. Now looking at Brexit, when the referendum on whether or not the UK would leave the EU was held in 2016, the DUP were the only party in Northern Ireland to support leaving. They favoured a Brexit which would mean that the UK leaves as one, but when soft Brexit options were debated in Westminster, and I will do a series of blogs later describing the entire story of Brexit and why it still matters, so look out for that. They voted against each one. When Boris Johnson came to power originally on a pro-union mandate, he promised he would get Brexit done. After renegotiating the original withdrawal agreement and offering it to the EU, 
to do you for your resume and to watch Johnson's offer on the 2nd of October before announcing on the 17th of the same month that they plan to vote against it. When the vote on the withdrawal agreement eventually went to Parliament, the DUP voted against the trade deal, but it ended up passing anyway in December 2020, effectively delivering what is known as the Northern Ireland Protocol, or explained simply for anyone who doesn't follow UK politics, a border down the Irish Sea. This is where the definition of the DUP starts to get interesting, as we see how much they changed in 2021. Despite being firmly against the protocol, the DUP started 2021 by trying to make the best of it. The then leader, Arlen Foster, even made a controversial appearance on the Late Late Show on RTE, where she emphasised that, despite having left, the UK and the EU are still friends and should work together. But within two months of the interview, there were calls for Arlene Foster to resign after facing calls for her resignation and backlash from her inner circle of MOAs slash MPs. After claims were made that she'd softened the DUP stance on gay issues, not that the previous comments she made would have foretold this at all. Since then, the DUP have found themselves tangled up in a mix of leadership crises that has seen them going from having one leader to three within a few months, a milestone which has only been held before by their once big but from 2005 little brother, the UUP. With Evan Pitts, Harling's original replacement, only lasting for 21 days. Pitts was a hardline unionist who comes from a religious background and is a big fan of the environment. Their current leader is Sir Geoffrey Donaldson, a man who some say is moderate but who wants to be taken more seriously, who has sent shockwaves throughout Northern Ireland recently by pulling the now former First Minister, Paul Kippen, out of government and protest that the NI protocol hasn't collapsed. This means that yet again, Northern Ireland has been left without a government and to make matters worse, the parties still insist on arguing like little children. This means that Thanks to the Good Fridays at Belfast and St Andrew's Agreement, if one party doesn't come back into the Heath Assembly, Northern Ireland doesn't have a government. Unless Westminster grows that we return to direct rule, which, let's face it, just isn't going to happen. So, to summarise what the DUP is, they are a Christian pro-union party with a percentage of evangelical support, although they are supported by mixed religions, even to the moderate extent. They supported the UK leaving the EU in the 2016 referendum, and wanted a deal where the entire UK left together, which led them mostly into supporting most hard deal Brexits. Before the British government passed gay marriage and abortion services into NI law, they were fundamentally against both political issues, 
They are against high risk language legislation from those to Scots, but mainly due to how much each actual cost and what money could get put into other areas. They are determined to see the Northern Ireland Protocol collapsed and will not return to the Assembly unless this happens. Hope you enjoyed this summary and please tell me your thoughts in the comments. Next video will be out on Sunday and we will continue this series next week starting from every Tuesday and Thursday. See you then. This is Phoebe's Lab. Good.